Welcome, everyone. Today, we're talking to Moshe Teitelbaum, and Moshe is a visionary entrepreneur who started and successfully exited four companies, the Voice of Israel called Moshe, the Jewish Steve Jobs. Moshe, I can't wait to hear the background on that. Um, tell me a little bit about why the Voice of Israel calls you the Jewish Steve Jobs. Interesting how they got to that point, and I'm not really sure why they extrapolated that specific uh, analogy as the Jewish Steve Jobs. But yeah, I've been called a visionary entrepreneur. I've started um, um, companies in multiple industries, in the alternative energy industry, and in the telecom space, I've started actually two successful companies, which I exited successfully, and um, now in the payments. And the interesting part, how I got to payments is in on my latest company, we had around 500 agents, resellers, and vendors that we had to make payments on a monthly basis, which is kind of a lot. As we grew, it was uh, kind of, we started with paper checks and as it continued growing, we realize that it's it's unmanageable. It become it's very very hard to keep track on lost checks, reissuing checks, and other stuff. Then um, we moved over to ACH transactions, which is um, electronic transactions. We had an issue with manual the duplicate manual entry, which is a hassle in itself. But error rates were pretty high. Um, the approval process, which need every transaction need to be approved by the account signer. And if we didn't sign, approve it in the same day, the transaction got canceled and the bookkeeper had to re-enter the data. It was a pretty, um, I would say, tough experience. And we were looking around for a lot of solutions for integration to see how we can actually make this issue um, less of an issue in our company. And the more we were trying to find solutions. We always found solutions that required complete process changes, new integrations. It's like we need to start taking invoices in a different way in order to be able to make the payments in a different way, which is pretty hard to do when you're a, when you're a startup and you're not trying to add any more processes. You're trying to stick with the minimum you can and to add things. So when I sold the company and I was under an NDA in the telecom space, I figured, hey, Telecom has a pretty close ties to payments in terms of transaction security and a lot of other things, especially now when um, telecom payment and companies are trying to look at the telecom companies. How did they do it in owning the customer, owning the hardware, owning the market? And kind of from that aspect, we started looking and I started doing a lot of research on the bookkeepers, um, accountants, small business owners. And I realized that this, there is a unique opportunity um, where we can help companies who are issuing payments make their life easier. And the way we do it is by, we, that's what we actually developed is a plugin to accounting applications. And we interconnect with QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, um, SAP, um, some Sage versions. Um, we have interconnection with some industry specific um, um, accounting applications like point click care for nursing homes, YRD systems for real estate. So we have like integrations with many accounting applications and we keep on integrating with as many as, as we grow. We've, I probably missed a couple of companies as well. Um, so the idea is once you create a payment in the accounting application, like a check, don't print the check. Our plugin picks it up and it takes it from there and it processes the payment from directly all the data from the accounting application. And we contact the recipient of the payment over the email that we have for the vendor. And they are entering their account number and routing number. And then we have both parties account number and routing number. We just start a transaction point A to point B and the transaction is complete. We added a lot of nuanced, nuanced, subtle details that paper checks has. I 
we have an internal um, saying in the company that paper checks is the best method of payment. It has a check number. It has a stop data. You can staple on an original invoice. You can paper clip a note. You can do a lot of things on a paper check that you can do with the digital payment. So our job is to take all the advantages of a paper check and put it on to a digital payment. So one of the things we have when a bookkeeper creates a check in QuickBooks and our plugin picks it up, if the bookkeeper cannot sign the transaction, it goes to the owner of the account to approve it. The owner of the account, if, it's, if there is a CFO and a controller, we put in three people to review it. If it's only by a certain amount, only specific vendors need additional approvals, all this can be set up, pre-set up in our system. We take from the accounting application all the original invoice details, like the re reference number, the amount of the bill, the credit memos, all the other stuff which we include in the email for the signers and the recipient. We even take the attachment. For example, in QuickBooks, you can attach a file to a bill. We take all those attachments and we send it along so everybody knows what it is without doing anything. Um, every transaction gets assigned a check number, a, a V-check number. We call this product V-check. The V-check gets a V-check number that's being updated in QuickBooks. It's on the transaction in the bank statement. We make sure it's a part of the ACH transaction bank statement. It's the recipient sees it in their bank statement and they see it in their email, which makes it very streamlined process. All the data are um, actually um, automated end to end and completely streamlined. And above all, we usually clear the funds and next day funding. So you don't have to wait three days for funding. It's next day funding and things are pretty uh, streamlined in that process. So doing that, we realized that we need to add another function that is paying utility providers because utility providers don't have email addresses. So for that, we actually recently integrated with uh, the bill pay biller system where we can pick up a utility company and their address or uh, a mortgage payment or a car lease payment that is going to a bank where we will take the account number from the vendor information you have in your accounting application. Instead of mailing a check and waiting three days, we will push that payment directly to the bill payment network and make the payment so it shows up in your account paid next day and you can pay utility providers for it. And we're actually working on other solutions that is not yet uh, publicized um, and not yet running. We're working on a solution to help automation of credit card payments. Even though you have, a cre you have multiple credit cards in your accounting application, which reconciliation for credit cards is a manual, a tedious manual work. We eliminate all that by integrating with the specific virtual card that we issue and that has many cards under it. It's a pretty simple process. And again, it won't require any new processes from the bookkeeper. That's, our entire concept is driven by, it's the same as if you print something, it's just a plugin. Once you install the plugin, we push and pull data from the accounting application so you don't have to do a lot of things. You don't have to do any extra work. And if in, in, in reality, we eliminate that manual data entry, which manual data entry is the single source of manual letters. So okay. we eliminate, in, the, in theory, we eliminate work for the bookkeeper, but we also streamline the process. Um, for example, one company who, was, who were doing um, around 150 transactions a month, which is not that much, but pretty a higher number, had an employee working around eight hours a month on making payments. They reduced it literally to 10 minutes. So we eliminate a lot of time, a lot, a lot of error, a lot of errors. Basically, we improve accuracy by four to 600%, which is saving a lot for everyone. And that aspect, we believe we have done a marvelous job. And with what we're adding over the next six months to our pipeline in terms of product and offerings, it will make the lives of bookkeepers pretty, pretty uh, easy. It's, we, have a, we have a belief that a bookkeeper 
is meant to keep books, not to enter data. <laughs> you are speaking my language. I love it. Um, wow, Th that's a lot of exciting things. And, and for me, I think that's the biggest challenge with um, accounting space is you've got all this data and, and, you know, it's error prone. And then, you know, it's the least thankful part of bookkeeping is, is first of all, that manual entry. And then by definition, you've got to troubleshoot, you've got to solve the problems, you've got to review. And then, you know, there's a lot of time that's wasted where if you can eliminate that manual stuff, then you can open up and do more fun things and more meaningful things with the clients. Um, I, I'm really excited. So tell me, like, what was the, the biggest milestone? Um, so this is, uh, I love that Star was created out of your own pain. I mean, the, the best entrepreneurs find a solution to their pain, and, and but the greatest ones, they'll solve their own pain and then share it with others. Um, what's your biggest turning point in, in your current iteration of your business? And what's the biggest milestone that you're proud of? It's very hard to say in terms of milestones, because when, when you're an entrepreneur and you're doing the grind every day, it's Thanksgiving today, Thanksgiving today in the, in the U.S. And I'm working. I mean, I get in and I've, I've had meetings the whole day, so... What am I thankful for? I'm thankful for being here, for having the product ready. I'm thankful for the employees we have, the bank partnerships we have developed and the trust we have developed. We have integrated with MasterCard, which was a pretty big deal. We have launched on the QuickBooks App Store, which was a huge deal for us. It brought us a lot of business and a lot of exciting, a lot of exciting potential. Um, to say what's the biggest point the, my biggest excitement was a couple of months back when somebody out of the blue who i have no clue who that person is and i still don't know who that person is signed up on our account a to z and may, uh, uploaded all the required documentation to approve their account and started making payments. And I still have no clue who that person is, who that company is. And they're pushing a couple of hundred payments a month. So I don't know. That means we have created something that the market needs and people want, and they, they will do everything to get it on working in their side. And this is basically the thing that probably made me the proudest, even prouder than getting interconnected with the banks and bank partnerships, although it was pretty hard. Um, yeah. to get those things done. But the achievement of knowing that you provide help to people. And when in the first one, you always remember, we have a, we have a lot of them doing it. It, it keeps on happening on a daily basis now. But uh, this is kind of, wow, we're it's doing something great. First one where you realize we're helping people. Um, I was not the only one having that problem. <laughs> I love that. Um, who would be, so I, I know you and I were talking and, and our context is that our audience is, is CPA firms. Uh, I feel like bookkeepers would be really good natural connections for you. Um, but let's talk about the end user. So I, I'm sure when you were designing this, you had an ideal sort of client in mind, sort of size, sort of needs. Um, could you tell me who that would be for you for the VCheck product that what's currently running, the ideal customer is a company who has at least 10 bank accounts for whatever reason, either it's a real estate management company that manages 10 properties, every property has a different entity or a company that has a lot of vendors and a lot of vendors can mean a lot of different things. Sometimes uh, a small mom and pop shop is buying from a lot of vendors and they have a, a hard time managing their payments when they're not a large company and sometimes it can be a marketplace where they have a lot of vendors or it could be there's a lot of different we have a lot of interesting different venues that we see as ideal customers real estate management companies um non-profit organizations are actually signing up 
a lot because of the approval process, because nonprofit organizations like to have every transaction approved by multiple people. So yeah. they're uh, a huge, um, uh, a huge um, market in our adopt. We where we see adoption. Nursing homes, we see an adoption because it's also the same entity, uh, same uh, parent entity with a lot of uh, sub entities for each nursing home. And, and actually groceries, uh, mom and pop um, convenience stores somehow have a lot of small items from a lot of different vendors and they do a lot of payments. Another interesting market where we have seen um, an uptick recently is sub um, general contractors because they can pay one subcontractor five different payments for five different job sites and it can happen weekly or even multiple times a week as they need, need things. And so it's the idea, a company that manages multiple entities on different levels that needs to do it, or companies who are doing a lot of ACH or check transactions, regardless of it. So, yeah. Yeah, that, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me because my first thought when you were talking was the not-for-profits. Yeah. Um, because of that layer of security and, and, the, and the needs. Um, Another one I'm just thinking and um, throw it at you. I don't know if you you've dealt with this, um, but the the sort of private investment groups where they have uh, a lot of private investors and they're paying out sort of dividends and things like that. Um, Interestingly, we have not had any requests, so really? it's okay. kind of we're operating based on request now and. The systems we integrated, as I mentioned before, were all requested by one or two customers and we have a certain amount. If we get that much commitment for a specific system, we'll integrate with that system and make sure that we have uh, full integration. So yeah. Very cool. I love that. Um, and by the way, I'm a big fan of innovation and that's why I undertook this series. I, I love getting to talk to the, the innovators out there. Um, what would you say has given you the most traction in your business since since you launched? You touched a interesting button because as a startup, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, we have not, we, we still have not built out our marketing strategy. We are still focusing on the product strategy. We believe product first, marketing after. So, I don't know if it's word of mouth or if it's interviews, because this is basically we're trying to go grassroots, talking to people, um, talking to bookkeepers, attending conferences, or virtual conferences, etc., cetera, um, to make it a ma the maximum uh, efficient. The, the biggest traction, I don't know. So I don't have a direct answer to that, but I will say... Um, it's something we need to still do research to figure out. But so far, we're growing pretty nicely without any direct market effort, I would say. So I, I'm going to interpret that um, for our listeners. I think what I hear is it is word of mouth and it's relationship based. I mean, that's the only way a business can grow without marketing. So I, I'm... I really want to emphasize that you're growing without marketing. That's, that's really important. So, yeah. But the uh, point is I wouldn't, I don't know how, if I can say it in all honesty um, as a word of mouth, when somebody in North Carolina, who I have no idea how he heard of, about us sign up or somebody in Utah and somebody in Nebraska, I don't know how these people got to know it, except from maybe talking on podcasts and other shows, which, you can say it's word of mouth or you can say it's past the social media marketing. So I don't know how to put it social media marketing, but I would definitely say it's some kind of a natural growth. So far we have not put in any effort in direct marketing. So yeah, it's, it's fairly organic. I love that. Yeah. And, and I wanted to emphasize that for other startups out there that may be listening and saying, well, I don't have a marketing budget. How do I get going? Um, all right. Now this is going to be one of my favorite questions. Who would you say has been the biggest mentor in your career and what was the best piece of advice they gave you? I'm drawing a blank 
to some degree, um, not because I don't have, I had a lot of mentors. And <laughs> You're trying to pick which one, right? I'm trying to pick which one and what to say. But um, I have a good friend of mine, um, Chaim Newman. He's, a, he's all, he, he taught me one thing that I would say changed a lot all across my life is that we're all operating out of biases and ego and don't fight it, accept that, but don't give in to it. So don't fight it, but don't give in to it. His, his point is, be aware of it. So when you want to make an instinctive decision, know that this instinct is driven by a bias and an ego. Now, how would this decision be made without it? So when you're aware of it, when you're trying to fight it, you will probably fool yourself. Mm -hmm. By not fighting it and not giving into it, you have the ability to change what you're going to do. So I believe that was the biggest influence and in any success that I have because so many times instinctively we want to do something and we think it's our intuition or anything else when it's just bias and ego. Yeah. And when you put it together that, okay, this is probably from some bias, I'm not sure what, but it's definitely some ego driven with, by some ego and you're trying to define what, how would it be if you would, wouldn't care about the outcome, if you wouldn't care about the results or you wouldn't care about the credit? Zero ego, what will, how will it look like? And then you can kind of figure out, so it's driven by this ego, by ego, and this and this is probably the bias. And that's basically what it is. For example, um, I actually used this methodology in a specific area, I was trying to interconnect with a specific um, company to get some kind of validation of certain users on a certain level. And that company um, denied my request. They did not want to integrate with me. Um, the sales rep used some anti-Semitic slur during the phone conversation for not doing it. Wow. And I had the conversation recorded and I was like, okay, I will go to my lawyer, file a lawsuit and I will definitely get integration and we'll get publicity and we'll go blah, blah. And all worked out. And then, okay, this is what my ego wants. Yep. What's the best for the company? Find their competitor and make a deal with them and let them come back a year later and connect with you. So that's best, not for my ego, but then I figured out um, I have a certain bias. If you're hating me because I'm a Jew, I need to show you uh, something. I cannot be quiet. But, yep. Well, how about if I give in to that too? And I ended up actually going to their competitor, signed up, made a much better deal. Believe me, it was a way, way better deal. A couple of months back, the CEO of that company contacted me if we can start using their services. And I said, sorry, here's a recording of your employee. If you will take care of this, I'm ready to come. If you will give me 50% of what I'm paying now. And we're still in the middle of negotiation. But the wow. point is, I didn't act on my ego or bias. I didn't act even on something that I was, I believe I was wronged. Yeah. But... I still did what is the best for the company. Don't get stuck or hung up on something. In order to get that thing working, find somebody else who would do it for you. And I, that's basically the point. I love that, that level of, of, of calm because, I mean, it's, you know, people... No, no, no. Let, me, let me interrupt you. It wasn't calm. The people around me saw me furious for 24 hours. But before I did action, restraint... <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 give into it that's the point be aware of it don't give into it i i'm not fighting it i know he did it wrong and my i'm still ego driven i'm still i'm telling the story in public now because i am ego driven i want the people to hear that 
And yeah. I would love to hear back from that CEO that he heard me mention this story here. Because yeah. it's not that I forgive him, no. But I'm not going to act on it. It's not yeah. like it, he didn't do something wrong. He did very wrong, and it's still good. Yeah. No, I, I love the restraint. Most people overreact for far less things, you know. Um, I once saw somebody screaming because they, they didn't get butter on their sandwich that they'd asked for. It's like, okay, just take it down a notch. Yeah. But I, I love the restraint. I mean, it's it, clearly they were wrong. They did something wrong. And, and I love that you took the high ground and, and said, okay, here's, here's my payback. Um, that requires a great deal of patience. So I just want to applaud yeah. you for that. Thank you. Um, I do love that story, and and I hope whoever that CEO is hears this and ha has the decency to hang his head a little in shame, and you know at least have a conversation with the employee. Um, I don't think that's acceptable in any any civilized society, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm a firm believer we have to celebrate our differences, not not fight over them. Um, now, we're nearing the end of our time, and I want to be mindful of your time. Um, what questions didn't I ask or what stories would you like to share? Just one last thing for our listeners. Um, anything that people listening in should be following up with or, or knowing because of our chance to chat today? I'm not sure I mentioned one of the things that we're trying to do different in terms of uh, making transactions easier um, is the recipient, when they get a payment, they have everything in their email as if it's a paper check, but all they have to do on the deposit link, they don't have to sign up with an account with us. They just hit the, on the deposit link, they just put in their account number, routing number, and that's it. There, we are connect, um, and we are sending, we're validating, we're doing back end a lot of validation to make sure it's the right account, but the money goes directly into their account. So that's one of the things we're extremely different than any other pay um, AP automation systems that are, are there um, that it doesn't require actual sign up on the other side. That's one thing that I would add. And additionally, I believe we have covered pretty much everything. I feel like your product would help audit firms, CPA firms doing audits, um, because there's going to be that nice, neat little paper trail. Oh, uh, sure. The, uh, one of the things we, uh, we were actually asked to add is uh, an export for cash bases to export companies who have done all their transactions last year over our system. So yes, we've added, added that specifically, specific reports directly to have a clear audit trail of every transaction to know exactly where it goes into. Although in accounting applications, you can mostly have it, but a lot of the times it's, it's easier to have it on a per bank account basis or per, uh, it, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, all right. Well, what's something you'd like people, so people listening, um, CPAs are listening, what would you like them to do? Do you want them to reach out to you? How can they learn more about Star? And they, on Star.com, Star you can learn more on Star.com. You can actually uh, reach out to me directly on LinkedIn, I which I respond okay, um, on a daily basis. I'm not on LinkedIn all day, but I, I respond to the LinkedIn requests or questions. Um, and if you want to sign up, you can just sign up, go to star.com slash sign up where you can sign up. And our pricing structure is pretty simple. It's a, we have a pay as you go model where you pay per transaction, or you can have packages where you buy a bundle of transactions per month and you, in that you get a little bit of a discount on the price. Um, we actually have an offer for anybody who signs up until December 1st. Um, using, I've, you know what? Let's create a new offer. How do you call this show? Uh, it actually, you gave us a code. It's tex. Tex. It's the entrepreneurial CPA series. Okay, the entrepreneurial so, CPA series. So if you use tex code in the in the link uh, below. Okay. If you if you put it in, you get free. Um, up to I think forty five days was the 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 free, the free offer. 
So I yes. love it. I'll, I'll double check that and we'll put that in the notes. Yeah. Um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, we were speaking with Moshe Teitelbaum, founder of star.com. Um, check it out. Some payment innovation. Uh, I'm really excited. So thank you, Moshe, for your time. And thank you to our audience. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.